immunotherapy, treatment that uses the immune system to target cells. Rituximab, or Rituxin, was the first unlabeled humanized monoclonal antibody approved for the treatment of cancer. Rituxin recognizes a specific glycoprotein, CD20, that is found on the cell membrane of mature, normal B cells in the body and often overexpressed in malignant B cell lymphomas. When rituxan binds to CD20, the antibody and antigen complex starts one of three cell lysis processes, complement-dependent cytotoxicity, antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity, or apoptosis. In complement-dependent cytotoxicity, or CDC, the antibody and antigen complex of rituxan to CD20 leads to the activation of a complement system. Part of the innate immune system, the complement system, represents a large group of proteins that work together to destroy invading pathogens or cells infected with pathogens in the body by punching holes in their cell membranes, destroying the integrity of the cell membrane and killing the cell. In antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity, or ADCC, the antibody and antigen complex of rituxan to CD20 leads to the recruitment of natural killer cells, T cells, and macrophages that recognize and bind to rituxan complex to CD20. After the lycocytes bind to rituxan, cytotoxic granules are released and penetrate the B cell membrane, some creating pores to flood the cell and some targeting the cell's nucleus and destroying it. Either process results in the death of the B cell. Apoptosis, or programmed cellular suicide, can also occur from the antibody and antigen complex of rituxan to CD20. This complex signals the cell to start the process of apoptosis, which includes cell shrinkage, nucleus fragmentation, DNA fragmentation, and finally, cell death. Because CD20 is found on the surface of mature, normal, and malignant B cells, both will be targeted. Without the CD20 receptor, immature lymphoid stem cells will not be targeted and will replace the number of destroyed normal B cells with healthy cells. Despite the utility of rituxan and its ability to target CD20, limitations of its effectiveness do exist. Limitations such as malignant cells resistance mechanisms to apoptosis, inadequate immune cell effector molecules making antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity less effective, and lastly, the sheer number of cells that must be targeted and destroyed in lymphomas and leukemias. For these reasons, most patients do not attain complete response with treatment of rituxan alone. This is where radioimmunotherapy allows for further treatment options. Radioimmunotherapy, immunotherapy that uses very focused high doses of radiation to further target cells. Zevalin is the same monoclonal antibody as rituxan, which recognizes and binds to the CD20 receptor. By radiolabeling this antibody, Zevalin with the beta emitter iridium 90 it binds to the CD20 receptor, targeting both the bound lymphoma cell and adjacent cells. The path length for the beta emitter, iridium-90, is 5 millimeters, so all cells within this range are also targeted. Not only does the radiation destroy the B cell to which the antibody is bound, but it also damages the surrounding cells in what is called the crossfire or bystander effect. Rituxan pretreatment at 7 days and 4 hours prior to Zevalin is necessary to clear circulating B cells and other nonspecific binding partners in the body, allowing Zevalin to deliver radiation more specifically to lymphoma cells. This combined approach has been shown in studies to improve the overall response rate for therapy from 56% using Rituxan only to 80% with the use of rituxan pretreatment with iridium-90 zephalin radioimmunotherapy.